Hi, uh, hello. Um, hey, Rory. Uh, hi. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, you were early. Um, that's still like, what, <laughs> five seconds before it's actually the, the right time, but whatever. Um, I'm gonna wait like another minute or two before putting on the music just so, like, if anyone else wants to, uh, come in, um, they, they can, um, make it, but, um, yeah, um, hey, Anwi, um, uh, hey, quick way, um, need to, like, the, the, th the problem with using Notepad for, um, like, saying what album, uh, we're listening to during streams is that, like, I use Notepad during daily life, so it ends up in different, um, sizes. But yeah, as I said, we are going to be listening to, uh, Boards of Canada, Music Has the Right to Children. And also just talking, like, <laughs> the album is BGM. Um. The, the, the album is absolutely not the focus of, uh, today. I'm gonna need to desize that. There we go. Um, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. Let's see. Okay. Getting my model, like, right could be hard, but, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna start. The last time I did a, like, sit-down-and-talk stream was yesterday, so I, ha I haven't exactly, like, refreshed my, uh, range of topics. And today wasn't particularly exciting, mostly just exhausting. Um, I spent most of the day just, like, researching unsubbed anime. Um, trying to find, like uh, Raws to watch, um, as, like, Japanese practice, uh, specifically Precure. Um, and it turns out that finding that is hard, and, um, finding that, which is, like, finding unsubbed Precure, which is properly seeded, is, like, impossible. There are some series that I just couldn't find Raws for, which is really annoying. Um, uh, hi, uh, Riku Dola. Um, hello. Yeah, so, um, yeah, like, most of my, uh, day ended up being, like, <laughs> looking up Oz and stuff. Hey, Sharkin' On! Um, are none of the Precure Torrents soft-subbed? They are, and that's what ended up being, like, I... Look at, like, ex specifically trying to find raws is, is for convenience sake, because if I have- if I am using soft subbed, uh, that means that every time I'm going to need to, um, uh, like, turn off the subs, which is kind of annoying. So, like, if I could find them that way, I would want to, um, but I couldn't, so I- uh, like, I, I did end up, um- the ones I ended up, uh, sticking with were, um, Mahotsukai and Kira Kira. And specifically, um, I wasn't just trying to find them that are, um, uns- that are, uh, like, raw, but, um, I was- I was specifically trying to find, like, s uh, Japanese subs, um, because I- I can read Japanese a lot better than I can, uh, um, hear it. So it's like, if I can read along with the subtitles as I watch it, that makes it a million times easier. Um, and really, the 
the hardest part was finding the subtitle files. That was, um, I, it, it was a maddening process. <laughs> it was, out of the like seven different uh, series that I managed to find SRT files for, most of them were like 40 seconds delayed. Um, even the ones which are like more, uh, more accurate um, are still like two seconds off. Thankfully, the uh, video player I use has like a fix for that. So, um, Mahats Mahutsukai and Kira Kira, which were only about uh, one, or one or two seconds delayed, I'll be able to watch those. Um, that's not cool. Just, yeah, I don't know, it's. Uh, oh, I wasn't live? Ah, uh, I see. Hmm. Um, but yeah. So just, like, I do enjoy, like, trying to dig up old anime. There was a time when I spent, like, several days building up an archive of, uh, Gege no, Gege -ge no Kitaro, um, uh, anime that subbed, if not raw. Um, and that was really hard, and unfortunately I lost it when Mega, uh, decided to fuck everyone over. And I'll need to rebuild that sometime. Which is going to be annoying. Because a lot of that stuff had, like, one or two seeds. Ah! Uh, I was thinking about learning how to- about trying to learn Japanese sometime soon. How was it for you? Um, it's been a rocky process. I've been learning since, uh, late 2018. One sec, get a water. I've been learning since, like, 2018. I started with, um... Fuck, what's it called? The bird one. God, I'm blanking on the word now, um... I-I can just, like, look up the bookmark on my- in my browser. Uh, Duolingo. Duolingo. Yeah. I got it right as someone g gave it to me in chat. But yeah, I, um, yes, Duolingo. I started on Duolingo and did that for, like, a couple days. And then, um, I switched to, a uh, Wanikani. Uh, and started doing that. I also, um, I can, like, give out a list of, like, the things that I did, um, because it is kind of, like, an elaborate process. I also looked up a, um, like, flashcards for, uh, Hiragana and Katakana, which, like, that's the kind of the thing that you need to know before you start learning Japanese, or at least before you start le learning, um, kanji and grammar. Um, your chat's delayed. Ouch. That, rip. Um, yeah, so I recommend, like, looking up Katakana and Hiragana flashcards, looking up, um, like, using Wanikani and uh, Duolingo, um, but that, that was, like, that's what I was doing, um, late 2018, early 2019, and since then it's been, like, a rocky process. I've kind of, like, dropped and picked it up, um, now and again. But, uh, lately what I've been doing, um, is I kind of, I dropped, uh, Wanikani and, uh, Duolingo again, and fucking just dropped something. Um, I picked those up again, or dropped those again, and, um, have been, um, learning, or, like, experiencing the language through, um, immersion, kind of. I've just been, like, m my main methods are, um, ma uh, Magic the Gathering Arena, played in Japanese, and anime. Some manga, but manga that, like, is at a vocabulary level that I can understand is... I don't know. There aren't... That's more, like, kid stuff. And I do like kid stuff. Like, I like Precure and stuff. But it's, um, kind of the matrix of stuff I am actually interested in. Stuff that is easy for me to read and stuff that I can find isn't exactly, um, doesn't exactly click well. Because, like, I love to read, like, Cardcaster Sakura. Um, in Japanese. And I, like, went and got subs for it. 
but the sub or the raws for it, but um, the raws weren't good quality. Um, but yeah, that's that's why I want to like check out Precure in Japanese because it's like it's a the it's a method I picked up from Twitter uh, called the uh, the subculture method. That's like um, just learn the language through subculture through its practical uses. Uh, if I decide if I decide to learn French, you can recommend me some uh, some plays. I will keep that in mind. Um, that's definitely like what when I wanted like when I started learning Japanese, it was like. Japanese media is something that I, like, care a lot about. There's <laughs> numerous facets of it that I am really into. So, um, like, it was like, okay, I can read these novels and read this manga and visual novels and anime and actual novels and, like, just going to Japanese and, like, um, <laughs> um, pfft, words. Just, like, there's a lot that I wanted to learn Japanese for, and now that, like, I am, like, actually reaching a point where I can understand the language, it's like, well, am I gonna want to learn another language? If so, what? Because there's no other language that, like, really pushes me, like, uh, Japanese. Um, there's a few that I've considered. French is one of them. But it's, like, I don't have a list of stuff that, like, isn't translated that I would want to read in, like, French or Korean or Chinese or Russian. And yeah, yeah, uh, immersion is definitely the best method for learning a language. Yeah, it's just kind of, it's hard for a Westerner to pick up, like, Japanese, for example, because, um, there just aren't a lot of, um, opportunities for me to, uh, experience language that isn't through, uh, media. Um, French anime dubs? I mean, like, if I want to experience Precure legally, learning French would be easier than, like, than getting it, like, um, getting it, uh, in English. I don't know what... I don't know what that says. Um, Fra Francias es interesante en maestres difficile. I'm sure my pronunciation there got everything wrong. Um, yeah, I don't know. L languages just don't... For, a, for the longest time, my languages weren't a lot for me. Um, like, I struggled with them in high school. Um, do I read, uh, Manhua? Um, I read a few. Um, th there's definitely some Manhua that I've liked that are gay. Um, but on the whole, I don't, like, seek out Manhua. Okay, yeah, French is interesting but difficult. I see. That that would make sense. I think, like, the biggest advantage to learning French is that it is another Latin language. It's another, like, European language. Um, so, like, my experience with English would at least give me, like, that kind of jump. Because I can, like... I can look at, like, what was written there and see, like... There is a word that looks like interesting, and there is a word that looks like difficult, so that probably means interesting and difficult. And like, I kind of parsed that before, but it's... So being able to make that bridge would make it a lot easier. Um, but I don't know. I... I still have a ways to go with Japanese, and this is all still just like, theoretical, like... Thinking ahead on the future, um... Making plans before I'm done with what I'm done working on now. That's how I read Spanish. 
yeah, uh, Spanish and Portuguese are very so are really similar. Yeah. See, like, <laughs> it's my experience lear uh, being forced to learn Spanish that put me off languages for or like uh, other languages for years because I was forced to do that in high school and I did not take to it partially because the teacher was awful and partially because the way that like language is taught just doesn't click with me and so it's like that, that, that pushed me off it and also I just don't think like I, I, I don't think I click with languages because or like that because I don't click with classroom settings because I'm autistic and dyslexic and stuff um, yeah, like, may maybe someday I'll learn Spanish. That could be neat, um, but, mm -hmm. I hated speaking French in high school, but, uh, C-E-G-E-P and working have made it more enjoyable. Yeah, that's fair, that's fair. Like, I think having a practical use for the language, for a language, makes it a lot easier to learn. When I'm learning a language just because I'm told by, like, administration, like, you will not graduate unless you learn this. Um... Like, no, I see no reason to learn this. But if it's like, I want to learn Japanese because there's a lot of Japanese untranslated media, um, it's like, I have a reason, I have a, like, push, um, Uh, living in Montreal, uh, pretty much forces you to be somewhat bilingual. Um. Yeah, that's fair, that's fair, um. Like. I, I have lived in monolingual places my entire life. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um. There's a lot of things that in, in school that's just, like, awful. Um, I, I do want to go back up uh, to uh, Anwi's point about, like, school offered Spanish, French, and German. My school offered one French class and a bunch of Spanish classes. I got kicked out of the French class for fighting with a girl because she was being super ableist. Um... And then I got I got kicked out of the Spanish class because the teacher was awful and I was awful and she hated me. And then the school looked at their policy of like you need language classes to graduate and we're like, no, Ran is awful. We don't want her. We we don't want her staying any here any longer than we have to. Let's just ignore this rule. You, you could just take a like take a arts class. That'll count. So then I went and took film. <laughs> um, and, and I liked film. And now I'm, like, a film nerd. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, like, the, the method of teaching um, is, is awful. Just like... I took a Japanese class in early high or early college before I like formally started learning the language, and I did not click with that either because it was just like, no, I just don't learn in classrooms, like, and it was like pretty in retrospect it was a pretty awful class because it was like here's how you say this thing rather than here's what this means here's this what this means and here's what this means you can combine it to say this thing. Wouldn't have been actually very helpful in the long run. Um. I kind of, like, okay, look, I wish I had, like, had the opportunity to learn uh, Hebrew or Yiddish as a kid. That would have been cool. Um. Yeah. And the, uh, the Ran exception rule. God. We can talk about, like, all of that, um... Like, <laughs> I was a terror in high school. 
every all of the teachers hated me. Um, I, uh, for example, there was one year. I might have told this story on stream before. There was one year where I went through like five different English teachers, like between three and five. Um, but it was just like one teacher. I like was straight up like getting out of my desk into the like lanes between like desks uh, and being like no fuck you you're teaching this class bad i hate you i will fight you not like actually fighting but like i was yelling at him and it was just like well i'm not like i wasn't actually being threatening and i'm neurodivergent so they couldn't actually do anything against me so i got kicked out of that class instead of like suspended or anything Moved to a new class. I lasted maybe a week or two in that class. Moved to another class, and by the end of the week I was out of that third class. And I think that's when they were just like, no, we are putting Ran into online classes. No teacher can put up with her. Ah, fun times, fun times. <laughs> ah, fuck high school. I can go the fuck off out of this. Yeah, yeah, uh, so Ennui's thing about, like, high school, um, uh, high school doesn't teach people how to do things, because teaching people how to do things is pretty hard, so if you just, just teach them the thing to do, that, that looks like you taught them things, and is a lot faster. Yeah, yeah. See, the thing is, my, my senior high school te uh, English teacher, like, actually really liked me, and she was cool. Um, one of the most formative memories I have about her is how one day during, like, a break, or because, like, my school had one class, short break, another class, lunch break, another class, school is over. And, um... Depending on the day, I would either have English before or after the first break. And so one day I just like came in early during the first break. And this this class was cool because there was a couch on one wall. There was a couch that I, like me and my friends would just sit on. And it was cool. There was a table there. We could just do our work there. And it was way comfier than desks. Um, and the teacher was cool at that. And that's just where we sat. That that uh, couch was, however, right by the um, but right by her desk. So I come in and like sit down in my usual spot, pull out my phone and just start playing like Hearthstone because I was into that at the time. And then I just hear the teachers being like, "I fucking hate these military recruiters at the school because they just and it was just like going into how military recruiters prey on um on students." And the specific story, uh, she was, she was, like, on the phone with another teacher, but the specific story she said was, like, this one kid who was, um, wanted to go to culinary school. And the military recruiter was just like, well, um, if you, if you want to do cooking, you can join the military and cook in the military, and we'll teach you how to do that. And it was just like... <laughs> What the fuck, dude? What the fuck? And I appreciate that she was just like pissed about that. Because call or er, uh, high school military recruiters are awful and should be illegal. Hmm. Yeah, I uh, don't know if I'm autistic or anything, but I had a super rocky relationship with pretty much every teacher and would regularly regularly cry during lunch periods. I don't cry like crying is not a thing I do. But otherwise, that is, uh, rather accurate. Um. Like, I had the teachers who loved me. Like, the film teacher I had, uh, absolutely loved me. I took his class twice, even. Just because he was, like, great. Um, that English teacher loved me. Um. 
But then you have teachers like the other English teacher who I like fought in person. <laughs> like and a bunch of other teachers who just could not stand me. Um On the thought of like terrible teachers and crying, um I'm like I don't cry and that was even a thing back then. Um but I had a I had a fucking kindergarten teacher who made my classmates cry. God, that's a memory to unlock. <laughs> like she was just a tyrant. Um I I have like a bunch of stories about her now that I think about it. Like she ripped up a kid's art because he copied another kid. It was just like, no, you copied this kid. That it's it's illegitimate. I'm going to tear it up to shreds in front of you. <laughs> and there was like another time where my grandma came in um as a like assistant substitute teacher. And it's like kindergarten, so we're just drawing. And uh, gr my grandma was just like, "Oh yeah, I don't care what color you you um you draw these things in, draw them however you like." And then the teacher came back the next day and was like, "No, you tr you colored these things wrong. You did this wrong. You you kindergarten teachers failed art." Why are all of my bad t stories about that teacher involving art? I just realized that. Yeah, these are the type of experiences that determine your relationship with education. Yeah, that, that was, um, god, I could probably fill up a stream with, like, bad teacher experiences. Oh, oof. L nervous laughter leading to more nervous laughter sounds... That sounds like a bad loop. Um, I'm trying to think of what other, like, terrible teacher's uh, stories I had. I have largely forgotten my time in high school, thankfully. Um, due to a mixture of goldfish memory and uh, trauma. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. I, like, I could get into, like, the bullying stuff in, uh, middle school. A kid threw a fucking basketball at my face, broke my fucking glasses, <laughs> and then it was just like, oh, he missed. Um, extremely lucky to, went to a private school that was specifically good for, uh, neurodivergent students, but that was expensive. Uh, starting in my last year of, uh, middle school, I didn't go to, like, a private school, but, um, I, like, that was when I got diagnosed with autism, and that's when I started, um, I got, like, schools in my dis district had, like, a specific neurodivergent program, where it's, like, if you're autistic, um, if you are, uh, if you are neurodivergent, you will be in one of two programs. There is the, uh, high-functioning program and the low-functioning program, and, mm, Th those are bad labels, and that, that kind of defines why that program was kind of bad. But without that program, I wouldn't have made it through high school. Um, yeah, yeah, like, I I imagine if I had made it more than a semester into college, or if I'd even, like, cared enough to uh, get into, a, like, a university or something, I might have, like, really gotten into college. But the problem is that, like... By the time I was graduating, I did not give a shit about school anymore. I was just like, I am so depressed, it's a miracle that I haven't killed myself yet, like, I don't care about college. So I didn't like, I never even took like SATs or shit like that. And just kinda, um, mo I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my life once I graduate, but I'm just gonna keep moving through life. And at my family's insistence, I ended up going to a local community college for a semester, and I dropped out. 
Um, and then I drifted for about three years and became a VTuber. But, uh, I feel like if I had stayed in college, or if I had gone to the right college, I might have stuck with it. But, like, also the problem with graduate or with uh, going to college is that, like, I didn't, I didn't know what I would want to, um, I didn't know what I wanted to, uh, major in. And I finally recently decided that! Years after I dropped out. But maybe I'll come back. I I once heard high functioning is used to deny assistance and low functioning is used to deny agency. And I think about that every time those labels come up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's it. That's it. Like. There, it was the way that the um, low functioning kids were uh, treated was terrible. They basically never left their one classroom that they had, and it was just like, they're always in there, they're not, they, like, are allowed to leave, but they don't go to normal classes. It was basically like, they, they, they were definitely treated like, wow, we have these, like, we have these babies, and they're high schooler size, so we just need to take care of them. <laughs> and it's like, God, that that's pretty awful. And then, like, I don't know, the way that my classmates and, like, the program that I was in, we were treated all right, all things considered. I think that we were given, like, specific, like, socialization classes. And I think, in theory, those are pretty decent. Because it's, like, yeah, I don't know, learning how to understand neurotypicals can be a valuable experience. But, like... We would spend, like, a month out of every year learning on, like, here is how you do a, uh, job lesson. Or not, or, like, a job interview, or, like, shit like that. And it's like, you're not teaching me how to, like, live in society. You're teaching me how to be, like, I don't know. It's the same kind of shit that goes on in the rest of school. That it's, like, make it, like, it, it doesn't care about the, like, experience of the person, just what they can do. But, like, despite those glaring errors, um, there was still nice stuff. Yeah, teaching how to be a worker. Um, but it's like, when I had to take classes online, I took it in that classroom. Um, and so I was able to have, like, a quiet environment for that. Um, I, I always ate lunch in that room. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would say it's, like, unfortunate or fortunate that your school didn't do that. I think that that program definitely helped me in some ways. Um, I feel like I kind of hit a low in, like, my last couple years of high school. And if not for that program, and if not for, like, the teachers in it, I probably, I, don't, I, I definitely wouldn't have gone through high school. Because they were just, like, very much propping me up, um, and I do appreciate that. And it's also the fact that they had my dad's phone number on, on, um, like, on speed dial that, like, I could never skip class. Uh, banger alert. Um, what sucks with the models of individual, of very individualized learning, hands-on work, and explanations and accommodations is that I was very poorly prepared for lecture-based classes and not knowing professors. Um, yeah, that, that's, a uh, that's fair. Um, I definitely had problems with that, with, like, I leaned heavily on my IEP in high school, and I wouldn't have gotten by without it, um, but, um, I think, like, if I had been able to even have something, like, half as that much as that in high, or in a college, I might have gotten through it. But it's just, like, I think the problem between high school and college is that high school is so structured that it's, like, you have these classes at these times, and so does everyone else. Um, maybe not everyone has English at the same time, but everyone has English. Uh, you know, not everyone will be taking the same, um, th the same electives, but everyone has electives. And, um, 
I just, uh, after a point I was like, hmm. I don't know. I just, I went to college and was like, I'm going to take three classes a week. This, uh, which ended up being like, I was in classrooms, I, um, I think like five times a week. Um, I, I was in classrooms five times a week, and it was just kind of like, I, I dropped out of math on the first day, because I was like, I don't want to be here, wait, I don't have to be here. And in high school, I did have to be there. And it was just kind of the attitude of like, I don't have to be here, they kind of ruined me, because I didn't. I, and it's like, hmm. I just kind of left. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. I also just, maybe I should have taken more fun classes. God, this is just reminiscing now. Um, but yeah, uh, someone else, uh, Umbrella System. I had the socialization classes in high in school, but I didn't feel like they addressed my, spe my specific issues, really. Yeah, yeah, I think that's kind of where I'm at, like. Um. It, it was a, like, it was a class, and then, like, there is a curriculum that they were teaching us on. We would get that curriculum every year, even, like, it repeated. And, um, um, it was kind of like, mm, it, it didn't feel helpful after a point, and even original, even the first time, it didn't really feel super helpful. And that was a bit of an issue, but mm, it kept me alive. Um, I say the biggest difference between high school and college is the structure of the classes themselves. Like the point of classes are developing skills rather than uh, learning a point. Um, yeah, that's a fair fair way to look at it. Um, I do think that like the highly structured nature of uh, high school. Versus, like, I was taking, I was taking night classes for the first time in my life in, uh, college. Because I didn't have to be awake at, uh, fucking, I was waking up at 5.30 in the morning to get to school. And once I didn't have to do that, it was like, I can do anything. And then it was a bit too much freedom, I think, like. Maybe it's just me, but, like, I do need some kind of structure in my life. Um, which, that's why I, um, that's why I schedule my streams, by the way. Um, if I didn't, if I didn't manually schedule my streams and just had to be like, I'll stream when I want to, I would probably not stream as much. Because it would be like, I'm kind of tired, I don't want to stream today. Even, like, five minutes before I went live, I was on the couch just like laying there and it was like I'm tired I should cancel stream but then it was like no 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 I shouldn't because I have the stream scheduled and I need to be doing this and this is my schedule and like that's it's it's good to stick with it um yeah yeah I imagine for people still in school like the pandemic has ruined a lot um I can't imagine what it would be like if I was still in school at this point. Any high schoolers who are like still like succeeding and thriving in school in these times are like incredible. Because I had the best situations that I probably could have had uh, in high school and it was like I <laughs> couldn't get through it. Um, I definitely would have, like, slept through classes. Hmm. It, it did ruin some things, but it saved me from so much shit that, uh, I'd have to put up with it. Mm-hmm. I'm just like vibing to the music now. <laughs> 
Shadow of Force of Canada. I just had a thought for a thing that I'm gonna try. Yeah, this music is good. Um, yeah, like, I was... I, I was hoping that, like, this would be good. Um, it, it, it's, like, chill stuff to 5-2, uh, which is what I wanted this stream to be. Um. <laughs> Music has the right to ch childhood traumatic memories. Um. I don't know, I wouldn't say that anything that we're talking about now is, like, traumatic. There is definitely, like, harder stuff that we could dig into that, um, I don't want to dig into. Um, so we won't be digging into. Um, let's see. Can I chroma key notepad? I'm gonna see if I can chroma key notepad. Nope! <laughs> uh. Hmm. Summer camp and Twitter were your childhood, uh, or were your, your teen traumatic experiences. I didn't start using Twitter until, like, pretty late. Um, I was, like, out of high school when I started using, uh, Twitter. Um. But I, I have my own, like, we're not... We don't have enough time left in today's- in, in tonight's stream to get into all of my fucking <laughs> all, all of my summer camp experiences. I'll leave it off at, like, my parents didn't like me, so they shipped me away to, um, summer camps as much as they could. And in the moment I enjoyed them, but in retrospect it's just kind of like, Okay, so Hmm Okay, I'm <laughs> trying to make this like chroma key on notepad work is so dumb. Why am I doing this? Yeah, camping experiences are the things I can't forget. Um, I know I'm not gonna get into traumatic experiences, um, just cause like I have a lot of them and. Even if today, tonight has already been a kind of, like, a kind of serious, uh, topic, I don't really want to bring it in that direction. And, like, uh, you're fine, for the record. Like, you did not cause this. I was the one who, like, responded and, um, took it along this way. Um, yeah. Uh, like, really, the reason why the conversation died out is because I was focusing on the chroma key. Like, when I... I just had a dumbass idea and was like, I should try this. And, um, yeah, yeah, it looks, it does look kind of sick. Um, I, I think if I, what I was trying to do is just, like, just the black lettering. 
but that doesn't work. Um, but I managed to make it work somehow. Um, which is better than nothing. Um, I don't know. School sucks. <laughs> I don't really know how else we can like keep that conversation going, but um. I guess like, I so I did this thing, to, uh, this like talking to chat stream thing, because I didn't want to play a game this week. And, um, my usual Monday streams are playing games, but it was like, do I, is that something that I want to keep myself structured to? Do I want only playing games to be a hard rule? Because I, I don't play a lot of games. I've been playing games lately, both on stream and off, but it's like, that's unusual and that doesn't happen often. So I think, like, in the future, stuff like this will happen more. And I might even do, like, non, um, other Monday streams that aren't this and aren't video games. But I don't know what that would be. Maybe, like, Japanese practice. Maybe other stuff. Um, this track is a banger. I, I, I like the, like, I like the counting. Um. <sighs> yeah, fine. That wasn't, that wasn't sighing, I just had breathing problems. Um. Yeah, they, they really do be saying numbers. Um. It's a cool vocal sample, and uh, complements the uh, the track well. And um, I mean, honestly, like doing a stream with Boards of Canada as the BGM is like that is the most going back to my influences that I could be, because the first time that I like looked at a streamer and thought. This is something that I want to do. Was um, Kathleen Devere of Letting Ready Run uh, doing a like playing music on stream chat, and she played a bunch of like uh, '90s IDM and ambient techno, and uh, Boards of Canada was one of those. And it was like, oh, this band is really cool, but also what she's doing seems fun. I kind of want to try that. And then I didn't for years. And then late last year I was like, wait, I maybe I should actually try this. And then I did. Now we now we're here. Um I I tweeted like on a couple days ago um that I was like what if I like had uh, Canadian wildlife footage as the background? And that was a uh, reference to the um Kathleen stream. Uh, you glad I did? I'm glad I did too, like, I think, I think everyone, when they start doing a, um, job like this, imagines that they're gonna have more success than they do. Like, I definitely, like, thought I would be bigger, I hoped I would be bigger, but, I don't know, this is fine, like, I'm, I'm, I'm still starting out, um, and, I have people around, you know, I have followers, I have viewers, and that's nice. Yeah, now I am a fish on the internet. I mean, I was always a fish on the internet, but now I'm a fish on video. Um, and, I don't know. Streaming is fun, and I'm glad that I uh, did this. Um, 
and it's it is exhausting. But uh, I'm, I'm glad I keep doing it. Yeah, video killed the radio star. Yeah, now now I'm more fishy, fishier. See, fishy is like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got beaten to the video killed the radio star joke. <laughs> yeah, I'm twice the fish I was before. Um. And. <laughs> the streaming is cool. Um. It's a different experience than, like, any other kind of uh, art making that I've done before. Because I do, I do approach these streams as, like, I am an artist, and this is my art. But, um, my other art is, like, I, I write, I make music, um, and that's very different from this. And I appreciate the differences. One fish, two fish, ran fish, cool fish. <laughs> nice. Um... Cool, cool drum, uh, sim or, uh, drum breaks here. Yeah, cool fish. I prefer to think of myself as cute, but I'll, I'll take cool. I'll take, I'll take most compliments I'm given. I'm vain like that. Yeah, cute fish enjoying a song. I mean, it's a really good song, though. Cute, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, going back to, like, talking about my, uh, the, like, the nature of my streams, I do, like, just, like, these streams as a form of music stream compared to my uh, DJ mixes that I do on um, Fridays. Because, like, those take effort. I need to do research for those. I need to prepare what I'm going to say about a given song ahead of time. Those are, like, those are as much lectures as they are streams. So it's nice to just be able to, like, put on some music and not have to change topics every three minutes when a song changes. Um, it's definitely a lot, like, more, more calming. More, uh, less exhausting. <laughs> and yeah, Boards of Ranada! I, I, I like that. Well, while the DJ mixes are kind of exhausting at times, I do find them fun, um, especially to research. I have a bunch that I'm like, I have a bunch of um, DJ mixes that I'm uh, like working on slowly, that I'm like finding tracks for, that um, I'll, I, I will be doing at some point. That's like, some of them are more oblique. Like one of them is like, quote, difficult music, which is like music that people who aren't experienced in music might consider difficult and it's like or like challenging or hard to listen to that's kind of like here is if you want to uh, get more into music here is a way here is like some difficult stuff yeah the DJ mixes are really cool thank you um glad people appreciate those um I I want I have a like I have a bunch of ideas for those streams. Um, just like, um, I have one that I'm working on that's like Adam's Adam Young's entire discography, which isn't just Owl City, and uh, but like is the stuff that he released under his own name, is and is some of the bands that he was in. Um, and that's like fun. Um, I also have some, like, uh, some other ideas, like, um, just, like, genres. Um, I'm a big idol music fan. 
especially of like underground idol music. And I would love to be able to like share the uh, underground idols that I really like with the world and um, possibly get more people into those. And then there's other stuff like uh, Black Gaze or um, Emo that I, um, that I want to get into. Um, gonna be going. 10 o'clock and you haven't eaten dinner yet? Yeah, uh, please, please eat. I don't know if you'll be back before stream ends. Um, yeah, there's about 15 or 20 minutes left in the stream. I, it, I don't think it'll be going too much longer. Yeah, but, uh, thank you. Um, have a good night. Yeah, Black A's. A black, a full Black A stream would be really fun. Um, because, like, I'm, I'm a big fan of, like, Death Heaven, um, Al Alcest, stuff like that. Or even, like, Violet Cold, um, Sadness, Life. Black Ace is cool. Um, and, uh... I also really want to do a, like, Nightcore stream, because I am unironically a fan of Nightcore. Like, I think Nightcore is good music, and I want to, um, get across to people why Nightcore is good, and just, like, pull from the best of the genre to be like, Nightcore isn't always just five-minute edits thrown on YouTube. Nightcore can be a very respectable genre. Um... Yeah, Sadness are wonderful. Uh, s sadness really are great. Um, top tier stuff. And like I mentioned Life, that's a Sadness uh, project, a side project. That's also like really good. Um, have one of their, or a compilation of a couple of their demos on CD, or on a cassette. And it's uh, really good because it's like very, um, on, on cassette it's like super, uh, noisy and lo-fi, which, um, isn't really an aesthetic that comes across in Black Gaze very much. Black Gaze is more of a clean genre. Um. And so it's just like, Really, like, knowing that people are getting something out of my music, and being able to- and if I hear that someone, like, gets into a new band, um... Uh, what band am I talking about right now? Um, I'm talking about Life. Um, I will link their band camp. Um... Let me, like, pull that up. Um... I need to, like, actually take it into my collection, because Life is a pretty general name, um, so, um... I'll- I'll- I'll post the link in chat. Um... There. Um, so, uh, that's the, uh, band and specific cassette I'm talking about that's, like, not super, um, clean, not super, um, like, it's, it's a more, like, demo-ish production, as signified by the name, um, and I think, like, that is... A lot of black metal is that way, and I don't dislike uh, clean black metal, obviously. Um, like, I like a lot of the um, more refined bands, but it's like, it is nice to get something like that. God. This, there's not a single, like, bummer track on this uh, album. It's just very, very good. 
Yeah. Black metal really is a wonderful genre. Um, black metal is another uh, thing I want to do a DJ mix for. Um, I have a few, like, even maybe covering specific subgenres. Um, the problem is there is, like, my experience with black metal is kind of scattershot. There's a lot of, like, classic bands I've never heard. Which is a mix of, like, my own ex inexperience and a lot of the classic black metal bands are really, really fascist. <laughs> um, but I, I could even just pull from, like, recent bands who aren't fascist, because there's plenty of those. Um... <sighs> I know. Music is really cool, and I'm glad I can share it with people. I'm glad other people like it. Um, or, or, like, like what I talk about. Um, yeah, yeah, the black metal scene really suffers from its ties to white supremacy. Because, like, you get people who saying that every black metal band is fascist, or that the whole, like, the genre is inherently fascist, and that's untrue. You have plenty of bands who aren't fascist, or who are even explicitly, like, leftist, um, making music. Um, but the, the history of the genre is still there, and it's hard to overlook, and even now, it's like, there are times where I'll be like, mm, I'm gonna Google this band's name and see if anything comes up. Just to be safe. Because that does still happen. Um... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Neek from Alecest, um... Uh, played in a fash band. But it's like... Neek was 14. Um... He, like, he was a kid when he was playing in that band. I'm sure he didn't... He either, like, didn't think too much about the politics of the band or just didn't care. Uh, but the fact that he was still there is, like, a sign of just, like, how pervasive it is. And, like, he has had fashy ba uh, band members because, you, as, like, it's getting easier, but it can be really hard to be, um, free of that. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not saying Neeg is fash, um... Um, I don't, I have not read about uh, accelerationism, so I'm not going to talk about that very much. Um, I have an accelerationist headmate, but I think she despises the fact that I'm a VTuber at all, so she certainly isn't going to give her opinions here. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, but, uh, with the, like, the problem with, like, so many bands being fashed, that's another thing that, like, I'm a big neo-folk fan, and neo-folk doesn't just have a fascist problem, it has a, uh, a, a, a crypto fascist problem. Like, there's a lot of bands who, like, will hide their fascism behind a veneer of, like, no, I'm actually not fascist. Um, and it gets hard because a lot of it uses, like, loaded imagery and, um, cryptic meanings. And so when people don't explain themselves, it can be hard to determine it. Um, last year I got really into Current 93, and it was like, before I did that, I did my own, um, I did my own deep research into Current 93 and, like, tried to come to my own assessment about his politics. Um, and it was like, Current 93, uh, David Tibet, he is not fash. He made some really bad choices about, like, who to hang out with in the 90s, or, like, early 90s and in the 80s, but he's not fash. Um, but for, uh, but, um, Dougie P, um, who, uh, is the guy behind Death in June, he was, like, one of David Tibet's best friends. He is super fashy. But there... Especially, like, in the 80s and 90s, their music was very similar. Not only in, in the sound, but in themes. That, like, using a lot of the same loaded imagery. But there are differences that you can tell that give the whole thing away. 
um, where where David Tibet has a song like Hitler as Kalki that like at first glance can be kind of like I don't know what to make of this. David Tibet will have an interview where he's like, no, this song is not saying Hitler is good. I'm not saying that Hitler is like someone I admire. Here is what the song actually means. Whereas uh, Douglas P will be like, no, this song that uses a Hitler interview doesn't mean I'm a fascist, but I'm not going to tell you what it actually means. And it's kind of like that absence of meaning gives a, gives a lot away. Um, and yeah, a lot of like a lot of being shocking and edgy. Like, that's a problem in, like, industrial, in neo-folk, in a lot of, um, extreme metal. Um, because it's just, like, people like to shock. That's true of, like, all sorts of communities. That's true of leftists as much as it is of fascists. But if you're trying to just shock based on nothing else, like, that a lot of people do sort of without thinking too much about it then you are going to get a lot of these like bad elements in your group that you're going to need to deal with at some point and you can't just leave them uh, you need to address it um, and I feel like these communities are getting better as a whole mostly because there's more um, segmenting you can be more knowledgeable about this stuff um, but it's like, in the 80s, you would have, like, a communist industrial group making the same rape jokes as the, like, far-right neo-Nazis. And it's like... Uh, and then that kind of just taints them in retrospect. Um, but it also just blurs the lines. It makes it really hard to tell where things end. Um, and... Cryptofash, like, Douglas P, uh, they, they really rely on that, because it's like, was this person just being edgy, or do they actually believe these things? Um, and that ambiguity can ask, act as a mask, um, and it's only, like, I spent l many hours digging through, like, neo-folk artists, um, trying to judge them. And that's how I came to, like, these certain opinions that, like, Tony Wakeford is a fascist. Douglas P is a fascist. Um, David Tibet is not a fascist. But it's, like, it's, it's not exactly easy. Um, yeah, yeah, irony was everywhere. Um, uh, this great anecdote of a punk band, The Dead Boys, having an, inter an encounter with their producer, a Jewish person who was tremendously angry at the use of a swastikas. Yeah, like, the period of time before people realized that actually neo-Nazis are really bad, like, you would see everyone using swastikas. The, the Sex Pistols did a TV interview wearing swastikas. And this is kind of like, that's bad, but, it, like, that was just what people did at the time. And people, like, that just sort of made it hard to avoid. Um, and it makes it hard to avoid, like, speaking of someone now looking back on this art. But, um, I don't know. I, the fact that we can tell now, with hindsight, more who is good, who was good, and who was bad, um... Not music, but Persona 2 has it learn it, yikes. But yeah, but like, with retrospect, we can better tell who was good and who was bad. It does help, like, looking back on this. But it is still, like, not great. And, like, even the best artists from those eras, like, have these issues. Like, I, I, I love current 93's music, but there are still songs like uh, Fields of Rape, which is, like, it's, that, that isn't, like, talking about, like, actual rape, because it's, like, it's a joke about rape seed. Um, and it's, like, f f 
fields of rapeseed. But it, you know, fields of rape. And it's like, um, but it's like, even including that, because it's like, the whole point is to be shocking, it's like, eh, you, <coughs> it's unfortunate that you did this. But I, at least I get that, like, that was something that tapered off in time. And yeah, yeah, at the time it was just like, it was subversive. Um, the, the, like, the 70s and 80s really were a time of, like, enough time has passed since World War II that what actually happened there is beginning to be forgotten, but it's not enough of history that it can be remembered that way. Um, so it was very, like, it was a different time for that. Um, yeah, Hitler is a joke of, in so much of popular culture that I feel like people forget he, he was even a human being. He wasn't a supervillain. His evil came from somewhere, something that actually exists. Yeah, yeah, like, I don't know. The Nazis were bad people, but they weren't, like, monsters. Like, not just Hitler, but, like, your average Nazi, be they a soldier, be they fuck someone in the concentration camps, be they, like, the worst, they were still people. They were part of their country, they were part of their culture. Like, everyone was doing that. And it feels like the way that people, um, like, demonize and dehumanize them is to try and say, like, I could never be this. Uh, if the Nazis happened now, I would stand against them. But then it's like, in America you have stuff like people, like undesirables getting rounded up into camps. And it like, nobody is saying something. And it, it feels like if when history does begin to repeat itself, people have so thoroughly distanced themselves from that um, history that they purposefully don't see themselves in it. Um... And this isn't exactly something, anything new. We're not talking about new stuff, because I've, I've seen people talk about this before. Um, yeah, yeah, American soldiers went to Vietnam and Iraq. Um, it's just like... Yeah, and didn't necessarily stand for white supremacy when they did it, uh, not intentionally. Yeah, it's like, a given person's politics won't be what defines, um, what, what defines their actions, both in a given moment and it historically. But, like, the military is a great example because the American military has done many bad things. In Vietnam, they committed war crimes. And maybe not every soldier who went to Vietnam is responsible for that, but it's like, they were still taking part in that. And with, with Vietnam, it wasn't even a choice for all of them because of the draft, but like, with Iraq and in the Middle East, it's like, that def at this point, it is a choice. Um, it, maybe not like as much of a choice as it could be because there are a lot of like socioeconomic factors that pushed people to being in the military as... <laughs> That, that ties into the school conversation we were having earlier about how the military uh, pushes kids in um, in schools to uh, join the military. Yeah, yeah. How could we blame the people who get pressured into it? Um, it is, like, it is a choice, but even then it's like you might not get that choice. Like, it... <sighs> How did we... I admit... I miss how we ended up talking about this. <laughs> we, right, we were talking about black metal. And then we ended up talking about the banality of evil. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a choice made from a lack of choices. <laughs> this conversation went places. Um, and, uh, almost over, so I think I might go soon. But, um... I don't know. I'm glad that I, this this stream was fun. I appreciate the like interesting conversation we were able to have. Um, a bit a bit serious, more serious than I was intending, but it was 
It's stuff we're talking about. Um, it's like water. And I'm glad we can all agree that fuck the Nazis. Especially fuck neo-Nazis. <laughs> because... You can get swept up in the, the zeitgeist of, like, an entire country, or even multiple countries, moving towards a movement. But when you're just an online fucking fascist neo-Nazi, that's... That is a very different situation. Fuck the neo-Nazis. <laughs> fuck the Nazis, but fuck the neo-Nazis most. And... I don't think we're gonna get any better than that tonight, so let's just... I think I'm just gonna end the stream. Um, thanks all who came. Um, this was fun. I'm gonna definitely, uh, do more of these streams in the future. Um, because I find them fun, and it seems people like them, because I get, uh... <laughs> I get people here in chat. But, um, yeah, good night. Um, bye.